Hello fellow riders! Today we're going to be looking at the differences between coil and air shocks and why I've switched to a coil shock. Modern air shocks perform extremely well for the popular all-mountain and enduro riding styles. They're light, durable, responsive, and nowadays offer a large range of adjustment. Now that air shocks are so good, why are we seeing more riders switch to coil? There's a few reasons. First, coil shocks offer some downhill performance advantages that air shocks don't. Enduro bike frames are being designed around bigger shocks and now can fit coil shocks. At the same time, suspension manufacturers are making smaller coil shocks. Finally, as the enduro style of riding becomes more popular, suspension setups that are focused on downhill performance are becoming more practical. So what are the main differences between coil and air? A coil shock uses a steel spring rather than an air spring. This increases weight of the shock dramatically. The weight difference between my Air DPX2 and Coil DHX2 is over 300 grams. Coil springs, when compressed, behave differently than an air spring. Coil springs require the same amount of force to compress the spring across the whole entire travel, whereas an air spring increases in force throughout its travel. This is why people say coil is linear and air is progressive. Coil shocks have a set spring rate that is dependent on the spring that is fitted to the shock. Air suspension can have the spring rate adjusted. Coil shocks have fewer seals and as a result are extremely active and supple. However, this can also mean they aren't as efficient while pedaling compared to air shocks. Finally, coil shocks are less affected by temperature and pressure changes during a long descent and will perform more consistently than air shocks. How does all this affect on-trail performance? I went to Auburn to do back-to-back -back runs on the coil and air shocks. For the first run, I started out on my coil shock. Good little test track, both descending and a little bit of climbing. And the point of all this isn't necessarily to prove what is fastest between air or coil, but might as well time each run to give you a little bit of a comparison. That was pretty wild, honestly. Shock felt good. Lots of rear tire traction. Let's head on up to the car, swap out the shocks, give it another go. Run number two with the air shock. I'm not gonna sprint too hard. No KOM attempts here.
Woo. Definitely felt a little less in control on that one. Before doing this, I already knew I preferred my coil shock. The back-to-back -back comparison did reinforce how much more stable the shock made my bike feel. It also showed the subtle efficiency of air when pedaling. So why did I only recently switch to a coil shock? I've always been interested in coil shocks. However, not until I got my new bikes from Rocky Mountain did I have a frame that would work well with coil. Because the altitude has a progressive leverage rate, it's well suited for a coil shock. To me, the confidence and traction the shock provides on the descents is well worth any climbing penalties. Overall, coil shocks offer more traction and more durability. They're also less affected by temperature and pressure changes during a run. Another thing to consider is that coil shocks tend to be less poppy. Depending on who you are, you might see this as a positive or a negative. Air shocks, on the other hand, are far more adjustable and lighter. They also offer a huge amount of bottom out resistance. However, you might have more heat issues and they tend to be less responsive than coil shocks. Air shocks tend to have a more playful and poppy feeling than coil shocks. Thanks for watching, fellow riders. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about coil shocks.